I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this is another Higher Things Video Shorts. Hey, remember this. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? So answer, I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the Scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? So answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the Word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? So answer, I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the Word of God and in faith, word, and deed remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? So answer, I do by the grace of God? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? So answer, I do, by the grace of God. On your confirmation day, your pastor asked you those very same questions and a few other ones. But what exactly is your confirmation all about? What does it mean that you are confirmed? Well, here's what it does not mean. It does not mean that you graduated, that finally, after all those years of filling your head with a catechism, now you can let it go like air out of a balloon and just forget all about it and never open your catechism again. Wrong. Confirmation means more Jesus. It's the public recognition that you, a baptized child of God, and a sinner, still plagued by the devil, the world, and your sinful nature, will now with the congregation receive more forgiveness from Jesus by his body and blood in the sacrament of the altar. More Jesus. Think about that. Can you ever have enough Jesus? We can never have enough forgiveness or life or salvation. So Jesus gives us even more. And confirmation says, now you're going to receive that as well. But what's with all the questions and those vows, those, oh, scary vows? Will you suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from the church? Well, look, the confirmation questions and vows that you're asked when you're confirmed, those are nothing more than you publicly declaring all the promises of God. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Sure you do, because Jesus has kicked the devil down, has robbed him of his power. His victory is your victory. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Sure you do, because that's the God who baptized you, the Father who made you, the Son who became man to redeem you by dying on the cross for your sins and rising from the dead, and the Holy Spirit who makes you holy by giving you the forgiveness of sins in His church, by water and the Word in your baptism, by holy absolution, by the preaching of the gospel, and now, again, by the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament. Do you believe the Bible is the inspired word of God? Do you believe that the catechism teaches what the Bible says? Sure, because you believe that Jesus leads you into all truth by giving you his word. Will you suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Will you continue to receive the sacrament faithfully and even die rather than leave his church? When you say, yes, I will, I do, by the grace of God, you're simply saying, yes, that you believe the Holy Spirit is going to keep you in the holy faith of Jesus your whole life long. So rather than think of those things as vows that you're under pressure to make or, or, or some promises that you're just mouthing because you know you'll never keep it, no. Those are the gifts and promises of God himself that you are confessing, that Jesus who saved you promises to keep you in the holy faith. Well, now sometimes people forget about it. They forget they're baptized. They forget they're a part of the family of God. But just remind them, hey, you're a child of God. Don't forget all those promises that God made to you that you publicly declared he made to you when you were confirmed. He made them when you were baptized. He makes them every time he absolves you of your sins and he makes them again when he gives you his body and blood to eat and drink and when he preaches his word into your ears. Those are all the gifts that confirmation celebrates. So remember your confirmation. Remember that it's not anything of itself, but it's a recognition that you, the baptized child of God, get more Jesus in his body and his blood. And so that's why when all the questions are said and all the vows are made and all the promises are rehearsed, your pastor gives you these words. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this has been another Higher Things Video Shorts.
and congratulations to all those who were confirmed this past Sunday and this past uh, Easter season or who will be confirmed coming up on Pentecost. And remember, now that you're confirmed, tell your pastor to make sure he takes you to a Higher Things conference.